So here I'm going to talk about measuring income inequality. Um, I do this in my Principles of Microeconomics class. You can use it in Principles of Macro too. And I also talk about it in International Economics because I make a lot of cross-country comparisons. Right? So uh, basically we're going to do, talk about the Lorentz curve and the Gini coefficient and do some cross-country comparisons. Right? So we, we know that countries, including the U.S., have very different income distributions. So people talk about the top 1% in the U.S. and they have much more income than the bottom 1% for sure. But also maybe the bottom 10% or so forth. They could have as much money as the bottom half. Right, And so we could talk about that for each group, but what if we took income inequality and measured it with a single number? Right, and that number, the most common, is the Gini coefficient, which here I'm going to mostly do from 0 to 100, and it, you could also do from 0 to 1, but either way is fine. Just make sure that you know that you know if you see 0.5, it's not on this scale, because no country has a Gini of 0.5. Usually it goes from 25 maybe to you know 70 or so. Um, but high is more unequal. So Gini of 0 is perfect equality, and a Gini of 100 is more is perfect inequality. And so higher numbers are more in inequality in a country. And you know, if you look at US over time or different countries, you can make those comparisons. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to measure each uh, total income as in different percentage groups and you could do percentiles uh, which is 100 groups or deciles which is 10 groups but here we're going to talk about quintiles which is one um, five groups and so we are gonna have the poorest 20 and then the next 20 and the middle 20 and then finally the richest 20 we're gonna see if they have more or less than 20 percent uh, you can do this for income or wealth um, you can do for other variables I do some stuff with poverty um, but for here we we'll just do income Remember, income is not wealth, right? Income is a flow and wealth is a stock, right? Income is earned annually or over time and wealth does not. Right. So anyway, we're going to take these numbers, these groups, we're going to do cumulative. So we're going to add, start with 20, but then 20 and the next 20 are the poorest 40. Then we add the next group and get the poorest 60, all the way to the poorest 100, which doesn't make sense, but the poorest 100 is everybody. 100% of people get 100% of everything, right? Um, now, under perfect equality, each 20% gets 20%, right? Nobody's richer than anybody else. Nobody's more income than anybody else. Under perfect inequality, one person gets 100%. So here, zero people get more, and here, one person gets more. You could look at it going from zero to one in that sense. So to calculate it, we're going to have the Lorenz curve, which plots cumulative income share on the y-axis, right? Each group's the 20, the 40, the 60, the 100, by cumulative population from poorest to richest, right? And on the x-axis. We're going to compare it to a 45-degree line where they're equal, um, and then look at the curve underneath, and we can look at the relative size of the area of what we drew underneath to the triangle that represents perfect equality. Right. And so sometimes I talk about the area above it and just do the ratio, but the area under all right, is going to be uh, small if there's inequality. So you take 1 minus that, and again, you could do 100 minus that too. All right. But when I usually do it with fractions right, um, you know, or decimals, uh, but either way, this 1 minus the percentage underneath, and that gets you the percentage above. Right? So perfect equality, right? you start with a 45 degree line for both, which is simply that y equals x right? in, in algebra. Um, and so to draw perfect equality, you say 20 get 20, and 40 get 40, and 80 get 80, and 100 get 100, you wind up with just this 45 degree line. Right? So there's the area underneath is the triangle, it's 100%. So 1 minus 1, or 100 minus 100% is 0. That's a genie of 0. Now perfect inequality would actually be nobody gets anything until the last person gets everything. All right, all right, and so here you have the um, last person gets everything. All right, and so if you compare it to the triangle here, this this area that we first drew has no area. All right, so it's zero percent. So one minus zero is one. It's a Gini of one, or you could say a Gini of one hundred. Right, it takes up zero percent of that area. All right, and so somewhere in between zero and one is is reality. All right, so I made some examples. I just made up these numbers. Here I've got the poorest. Uh, middle and then richest quintiles, right? And the poorest get 10%, and then 15 in the next group, 20. Finally, the richest group gets 30%. So it is unequal, but it's not as unequal as the next country. As this country actually has some inequality because the richest 20% get more than the poorest 20%. Now, cumulative, right? Um, the cumulative 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 the population, we're just adding 20 each time. But here, the first, this is the poorest 20, and they're the 20, but the poorest 40 are these groups together. And the poorest 60 are the, all three groups together. And finally, the poorest 80 have all four groups, and the poorest uh, 
100% has everybody. All right, so this is cumulative. This is what we're plotting here on the x-axis. It catches up to 100, starts at zero, but like right here, this would be 10, right? And so we get the shape. Now, the Gini coefficient is this area in between. It's pretty slim, so this is a small percentage of the total. The Gini is actually 0.2 or 20, all right? Or you could say this is a big area and subtract, but either way, this is more equal because this is close to the equality line. Okay, and we get a single number for that. All right, country B is more unequal. The poorest now get 3% instead of 5, and the richest get 50% instead of 30. So these guys, much more unequal, right? And you can see the numbers in between, and you can do the same thing with cumulative, or 3 plus 5 plus 12 is 20, and so forth. And it starts lower, and then it rises faster. This is more unequal. So this is how you draw an unequal Lorenz curve. Now, I did the math myself. I used geometry. Little. These are actually triangles and rectangles. And I got a genie of 20 for the equal country and a genie of 47.6 for the unequal country. So B is more unequal than A. You could look at the numbers and you could say, yes, the quintiles get different amounts. You could look at the curves and say, yes, this is more bowed out. Um, but the numbers give a number that can be compared. All right, so you can use real distributions to draw a Lorenz, calculate a Gini coefficient, and then compare countries either over time or across countries. All right, so I stole these uh, from Wikipedia. And here are just some countries that start with B. Um, here you see Belgium is 28.1. This is the lowest of all of them. Belgium is a northern European country. It is social democracy, a much more income transfers and taxes and so forth. And they have the lowest inequality. Now, uh, Botswana, which is in southern Africa, has the highest. Okay, And in between, you could have Bolivia and Latin America, which is also, uh, you know, high inequality. And so Latin America and, and, and Sub-Saharan Africa actually have some of the highest income inequality in the world. Bosnia and Herzegovina were a part of Yugoslavia, so maybe you know, there was a socialist legacy here. There's more equality. Uh, this does not say anything about wealth, right? You could have a poor but equal country and a wealthy but unequal country and vice versa. But if you were to compare, you can look at one number, you can say which of these is the most unequal. All right, and so then you can use this to make those kinds of comparisons, right? So we can take income distributions, plot them with the Lorenz curve, calculate the genie, and then make these types of comparisons.